Open Gate Quilts came out with a new pattern in their March subscription box. It's called Puzzle, and today I'm gonna make it for you. The fabric that I picked for this pattern is from Island Batik. It's in a fat quarter bundle. It's called Glorious Greens, and it is true to the name, very glorious. We need 20 fat quarters, and that makes the quilt top as well as the binding. So I have the scrappy binding around the side, and I'm gonna get my colors picked out. The pattern has you divide up your colors into four categories. So we've got our light colors, our medium light, medium dark, and then all these dark. So I'm going to go ahead and iron up all these fat quarters and then we can get them cut. I've got everything cut up here. I've got my light, medium light, medium dark, and my dark. And then these are the extra strips for our scrappy binding. We're gonna assemble this one block at a time. So we need two of these squares, two of these larger squares, and then it goes one, 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 two squares, four of these medium rectangles, and then two of the large dark rectangles. So I've got that all assembled right here. Here we go. All right, so I've got my pieces. And so with batiks, it doesn't really matter. You can pick a favorite side if you want, but it is reversible fabric, so you don't have to worry about putting the wrong side down. And it's easy to do with these types of blocks because you're not used to seeing the right side. So the right side will be up on these light squares and then the right side will be down. So you would see the wrong side, the right side. So just keep that in mind if you're using directional, or not directional, using fabric where that would matter. Because it's a mistake I make a lot. <laughs> Especially with um, flying geese units. All right, so I have a friction pen. Make sure I can grab the right one. And it's orange so I can see it. And these friction pens will go away the ink will disappear with heat, and that is very handy. So I got my corner to corner on my medium light and corner to corner on my medium dark. So luckily, these colors are pretty distinguishable, even though they're all greens, the range of colors in that fat quarter helped me out a lot. All right, so I'm gonna put that off to the side and just sew here, corner to corner, with just a touch to the outside of that line. Get my pedal foot. And here we go. And I'm just going to clip this at my machine. And these are going to be pressed out, so towards the outside of the block and I can make sure that this lines up reasonably. And it could be a little further out from where I've sewn the line, so I'll remember that for next time because this thread isn't specific to piecing, so that'll impact your seams. It's a little bit thicker, so my themes will be thicker, so I would have to move that out just a little bit more. And I'm just gonna sit here and clip this. I would actually take this over to the ironing board, but I want to show it all in one go. So we don't need these corners. Get rid of that. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this pressing tool just to make sure that's mashed down. It's good to mash this down and not press it too much. Usually the pad of my finger works just fine. And now we have those two, and we want to keep in mind to put them with the new squares pointed to the bottom right. 
our dark we have four of them that we grabbed we're just going to use two of them here and that goes to the left left and left so now i know that goes there and i can spin it around to where it's convenient for me so these are pressed out towards that dark because I'm not working with a bias seam, I feel fine really pulling on that, ensuring that it's flat. So next, we have our two long dark rectangles, and those are gonna go on top. So we still have our corners in the bottom right. We have the small rectangle on the left, and now the longer one on top. These units are now being pressed up towards the dark again. So I'll give it a little pull and press. Pull and press. We're going to go ahead and set these two aside and we need our squares of dark and a square of light. Light, dark, light, dark. These both get pressed towards the dark and the dark will be on top. We've got these two units and we're going to do a medium dark, medium light on those sides. And then to the other side, these each get a dark piece. So the dark square is facing up, medium to the left, dark square facing up, light, medium light to the left. So we'll just start with that. Snag. Just gonna flip this spool around. Yep. And then these are pressed out. Then we want these two dark rectangles to the right. So they will match that top. Once again, we're pressing out. Okay, so we've got our light, medium, and these dark, uh, medium dark's gonna go on the bottom. So we've got these two left. So we've got these two and they're gonna go opposite here. So, I mean, it's a complicated block, but when we just take it one step at a time, now we've got these two together and we know it makes sense. We've got our dark square up, dark to the right, and then these two are opposite. is out and we are ready to assemble these four. So we are going to have these facing opposite. That part's easy. These little corners, these triangles are going to face each other. And then we want to connect this triangle to this longer piece here. And then this is going to look like it's going behind that piece and it's going to curve around. And then we have this one. 
Nope. See, look where our eye travels. We go across, up, oh, we lost it. We want this light to connect here. So now we've got this bend. So our medium dark goes to the right, up. Now this light one goes up to the right. And we have this little knot that's formed right there. And then we have a dark border around the whole block. So you have all these visual cues to make sure that this is assembled together. So we're gonna fold both of these and then just press them in opposite directions. We'll press that one to the right, press this one to the left, and then get that block together. We can keep these connected because we're going to press this one to the left and we'll press this one to the right. And you see that this one's not as close, this one's spot on, but it still works. We get this nice bend, this little knot. Oh, such a pretty block. Okay. We go. So we're going to just make sure that these seams meet right there. And that is the only seam to meet on this side. All right. That is the whole block. How beautiful is that? It looks very intricate and complicated, but it's actually very easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these sewn up and the magic that happens when you put these all together. I've got the blocks all done and they're laid out on my kitchen island over here. So you have, you have this basic block and it gets twisted that way, twisted again, twisted again, so that these lights form a ring that's woven through this medium dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these down Get them at the machine, sewn up, and then I'll let you know about the quilting. I got my quilt up all done and basted, and now I'm going to go into my Procreate app because I took a photo of my quilt. Not the whole thing, just enough to kind of get an idea of what I want to do. And I'm going to insert a photo. So here's my picture. And I can just go like that. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to pick... Not to use my finger, my pencil is dead. So I got a new layer. I'm gonna use, I think I've got kind of this green thread. And here's what I'm thinking. These little clovers. And then I can bounce back, do another stem. Clover. That's pretty cute. I think I'm gonna keep that. So I'll do this meander clover style all over. All right, I'm gonna hop over to the machine. was such a fast and easy quilt. It was 48 by 60 inches long. I love the scrappy binding. It came together within a week. I just had the 20 fat quarters, got them all cut up pretty similarly. And I just, my the first thing my husband said when he saw this was that it looks like it's looking through a lattice at the sky because of the different tones of blues and whites. And I have to agree. I, I think it's stunning. I'm so happy with this quilt. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.